This might be the end of the stream today, guys. Good luck, us. Ooh, that's a good spot. It's a good spot. I don't expect like much checking here, so I'm trying to figure out like what to do. I'm gonna bet. I don't think I have to bet. I think checking's fine. I don't think it's like a high frequency turn C bet here. I expect a lot of shoving. I'm obviously calling. He has ace-king, we lose. Darn. Expect him to have ace-five, you know, I mean. It's gonna have like ace-nine, I guess, or something, I don't know. But I'm not folding his hand. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not surprised to see aces. Turn some hands into bluff, try to take some two pair out and stuff. Gonna isolate this. Pretty good flop. In three bet here. And check this back. Well, three bet takes it down. Check this back. Hopefully win. But we don't. Obviously calling here. Yeah, it sucks. We had uh, we were chip leader this this five thirty thing before. Not that it really matters. What matters is what you end with. I think this is a pretty standard jam here. I think it's close. Like close-ish. For sure. But standard enough. With 20 bigs. Good flop. It's a good run out. I'll take it. Gotta win a flip, but you know, you could do that. Get my chips back. <laughs> Take them that way. Take them that way. Works for me. Prodigious, how do you prepare yourself mentally to play such different stakes at the same time? I've seen you do 10Ks and 100s at the same time. Would you do it without stream? I think I was doing a 10K and a 33 actually. So you're trying to vote that one. That was a th I was playing a 33 with the lowest and um, 10K, yeah, was the highest. Um, I think that was last week. Um, as far as what do I do mentally, obviously like there's nothing to do on the day. It's not like doing dumping, jumping jacks or something is going to help you with that. Um, but as far as like how I think about it, um, it doesn't matter what the stakes are. I'm trying to win. Hey, we, we made it to the next level. So, um, so we're going to win it into the 5k, which, uh, kicks off on June 14th, 2020. And we made it in. So that's next week. So you guys should, uh, all make sure to tune in to the stream next week to see what happens in the 5k yeah and so like yeah so that's strategically like that's how i play and you know like some people want me to like you know try to do something else when i play and i'm just not going to <laughs> like some people watch you play and like man you know like th th there was a recent youtube video we, that we put up where like the first 30 comments in a row were like man you're a calling station like you're slipping you need to study more <laughs> like what's happening uh you know what's going on bro like you need to like you need to take some time off and like put some time in on the table like behind the behind the behind the what I don't know whatever behind peel solver and um and like come back tomorrow incidentally it was like a high stakes video too which which is like you know means that obviously the high stakes video didn't go well and of course like you know like I do check the feedback and the feedback when I say that it like makes me better some people think that I'm lying in the sense that like they think that you know like I, I put a lot of work into my game <clears throat> so like what am I going to get from like chat pros but you know like when there's enough negative feedback going in one direction um like I'll just I'll just double check everything, right? So I just like ran. I spent like the first five five to ten minutes or something of the of the video. Um, I 
Like, I'm not going to know. Like, I'm not going to know what your strategy is. Like, I'm not going to know if you're going to call. I'm not going to know if you're going to fold. I'm not a very humble guy, but um, when I play this game, I am. I don't play assuming that I, that I know anything about you. Actually, I play assuming that I know nothing about you. Almost. Right? I don't, I don't play knowing, assuming I know much. So. Which again, I think is common sense. I mean, you guys have watched me play for a really long time. If we played, you probably wouldn't have, like, if you just played against me, so my whole cards are all face up, you've heard the strategy, like, you can buy the introduction to Quantitative Strategies video and get the strategy. Strategy. Um... And in that way, you know a lot about what I'm thinking and what I'm focusing on. But most of you don't probably don't think you could beat me or like have a higher win rate than me in this format or in sit and goes or something. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe most of you think you would have a higher win rate than me, but that's with all of the information you have about me. You have an awful lot. So I don't focus too much on what I'm trying to like nail down what some other guy's thinking. It's a really romantic idea that like is cool in in movies, but not as practical, I don't think, in real life. <clears throat> Been watching for a minute now. Do you think your quantitative strategies would work on ACR, GG, etc.? Yeah, they'd work on any site. They'd work on at any limit. That's why I mean that's why my stable uses them. I I, I stake in finance. 60 to 70 people, something like that, 65 people, I don't know what the number is. Um, and we've produced eight figures together. And I check all the flop here, I fly to the big blind. Check all the flop, gonna check all the turn. Damn, I was hoping to win money there. I'll be honest. <laughs> this is thin, like, I mean, it's thin. I'm still gonna lose to sets and things, like it's still, those are possibilities. <clears throat> gonna slam here. He folded, and he folded here as well. That sucks. Mm. Fuck. I mean, aces is, kings has never folded in this situation, so. It feels like I'm gonna lose a tournament here, and I, like I kind of wish I was capable, of, like more capable of folding, but it's just like not in my toolbox to like fold to this guy. Like this cold four bet, it's just like not in me to fold here. So I do think that this player has aces a lot, <clears throat> or this player has aces a lot, especially with the timing. This player might have aces tons, but again, not really the way that I play to fold this hand. We double barreled the ace queen, <clears throat> and my opponent folded the turn. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Um, I had kings, and, you know, I was optimistic that that player might, like, occasionally have queens raise king, but with the timing, it didn't feel that way. But, um, yeah, not a big part of my strategy to fold kings free, so. We stacked off. Kind of popular. Counter strategies fall apart. It's not like less work, it's more work. By, like, a large margin. Good luck, us. Got a fade of jack. Ouch. Oh, we can re-enter. Nice one. Um, spiralizer. When you have a piece of someone in a 25k like that, or how like how how much are you sweating it? Not that much. Not zero either. But like not tons. 
I mean, like, you know, like once I get to the final table or something, like, depending on the situation, I may be sweating. Um, but mostly, like, it's just, I have a lot of guys that I work with, right? There's a lot of, like, I take action in a lot of people. So, mostly I'm just like, you know, waiting. Um, yeah, I think if I had some other hands, I would jam. I think this hand should just call. Unfortunate run out. It's debatable whether or not I'm supposed to shove the turn against the double barrel. Possible. Um, I don't think it's very likely, but it's not impossible. And I don't think the river's a call. Gonna flat here. Hey YouTube, BBZ here, and I am just highlighting one of the highest value videos that we've got on bbzpoker.com, and that is the BBZ Ape Styles footage where the two of us are going back and forth. You get to see him pushing back on me when I'm you know, giving my thought process. You get to see me defend that thought process and push back on him. And you get to see us thresh things out and try to settle on you know, really solid strategies that you might not be able to find anywhere else, okay? So this is the type of discussion that's just only available on bbzpoker.com and I highly recommend you get over there and check that out. Going to check off flop. Seems really close to call to call and shove. It doesn't seem close to fold at all. No jam. I think it's really close though. As I said. Um, gotta be more careful nowadays. Twitch updated the guidelines. Okay, well my, my team's gonna take a look at that. Thank you. Raceland, I appreciate it. Close this to my team. Wouldn't mind an eight. Darn. GG. We cash for 500. Uh, I'm gonna see bet here. I've worked historically with like, let's call it a hundred people. And I've, I've, I've coached them all live. And like, there's like 70 of them, or 70 to a hundred people, right? And they can all hear my thought process and they can all ask questions and they can all tell me when I'm wrong. And they can all be like, you know, this sucks. This is what's wrong with what you're saying. This is what, um, this is why I don't think that that's true. This is where I think the population is doing something different. This is why I think that this thought process goes, go, is going too far left. This is where, um, this is where you fucked up the math. <laughs> um, this is why it works in a different way than how you think, right? I have. I've had a hundred people trying to win the maximum for 10 years, you know, obviously not the entire time, but you get the, you get the point telling me like, yo, that's not good. Like, that's a bad idea. Here's, and like, here's why. And like, they'll back it up. And so that kind of trial by fire has produced how I think now, right? So it's, it, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, but getting here is like a very different evolution, I think, than like a lot of other players and um, which is, which is also like why I'm very comfortable playing at like relatively high stakes. It's just because like, I look, I've, I know how really high stakes players think I've coached lots of them. Um, and I'm very comfortable that I can compete and like that it was going to be fine. I hadn't played high stakes poker in ages when I started streaming and I was just like, yeah, it'll be fine. And you know, it's gone okay. <clears throat> Good question though. Do I play chess at all? Um, I played when I was a kid, um, and I go, you know, but I, no. Like the answer is no. Like if I, if you, if you're asking me, asking me if I'm good at chess, the answer is no. I'm not good at chess. You would all shred me. Anybody who's, any of you who think that you could probably beat me at chess, the answer is yes. You could beat me at chess. Um, do I know what a rook is and like you know what a pawn is and like do I know how to play the game? You're like yeah, like yeah, I can play the game. Like I know how to play. Am I good at the game? No, I'm not good at the game. Mm 
Is this kind of playing on the concept of when people say people never bluff in this spot? That is, they just assume people haven't constructed a proper range, aka a balanced range, and then overfolds compared to what a solver would say. Um, yeah, that's what they're trying. That's what they're. That's what they're communicating. Um, yeah. So no, that's that's true. Yeah, I would say that like a large fraction of those guys. Um, <clears throat> I think when I cover this player, I'm supposed to mostly jam here. Might be the end of the stream today, guys. Good luck, us. Ooh, that's a good spot. It's a good spot. Yes. Pretty good. Pretty good. We got the KO. I mean, like, it's kind of grindy. You know what I mean? Like, win, 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 win. Like, but, like, it just sounds fucking terrible, doesn't it? Like, I, be honest. Like, if you like it, what's wrong with you? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what's wrong with you? You can't like this. Come on. This is terrible. All right. Here we go. This is for the KOs. This is for the paper. Let's go. Give them that seven. Don't give them that ten. Don't give them no heart. Oh my god. I didn't even say no, don't give him no seven. Should have said should have, should have brought the seven back up. If you don't ask for it, then they screw you. I got got with the sneak attack. No good. No good. Alright, we got another chance at this. We got another shot. Round two. Round two. Trying to get some KOs. Not as much money this time. Oh my god, we're in way we were in way worse shape this time. Man. Fuck. GG guys. Um There's just like there's just like so much like Jack's Jack 10 like queen like okay, so let's go back. I'll, we'll go through this one. Just because I busted it. It might be bad. I'm going to end up looking at it, into it like later myself. Um it's the type of spot I might solve. <clears throat> but it's going to take me a little bit to solve it. If I if, I mean, no it's not. We'll just treat it like there's no ICM. And like there's no KO. We'll solve it. We'll solve it. The thing is like, the way that I would build this preflop range is like, there's not, like I wouldn't build it with like that many nines. Right, I wouldn't build it with that many nines. So this just, uh, bear with me, I'm gonna end up solving this one. So this is the, let me see what you guys see. Yeah, you guys, uh, let me get rid of this, got it, whatever. Um, let's pull, like, yeah. Like the fact that it's a KO changes a few things, right? So I'm gonna end up pulling, I'm gonna like load a, like a 30 big blind, um, big blind versus cutoff sim, three bit pot. We'll just take a look at what the strategy is supposed to be. This won't take long. Like it will, if, if it would take long, I wouldn't, so I wouldn't do it. So, so nine, nine, eight, and I'm just gonna like shave a bunch of this stuff out. So this is his preflop range. Like he's just not flatting these hands. He just isn't. I mean like, I'll give Ollie Bates at like a half weight. Ollie Bates is, uh, I wanna pull Kings too. I don't think he really has to do anything about like offsetting the fact that I just took out all those strong hands, like because of the fact that it's a KO, he's just gonna be getting odds to call it off in a lot of these spots. So like, I mean, maybe you could take all these pairs out because he just runs it with all of them. That's possible, but it's like, that's too, that's too generous. Like I just think that he's gonna value shove tens like all the time with the KO in my head. I think he's probably gonna value shove like a bunch of these other ones over here too, but, uh, or like whatever you wanna call it, semi buff shove more. I think he should be four betting more, but, um, oops, I don't know why I moved that. So, all right, so let's just, Really quickly, we'll just see what this does. So let's see what this has to say. So I'm kind of curious about like what this, I'm curious if I should have just jammed the flop. I mean, like I still end up with the same fucking result, right? By the way, like, you know, bluffing with these hands sometimes is like not a totally unreasonable idea. It gets less good when there's, when he covers me, but like, I need the, the KO and stuff like I have a little bit less fold equity, but I think it's, I, I, I'm comfortable with it regardless. Yeah, like just jamming is not a bad idea, but like it's probably the Ace of Hearts a lot, right? Like Ace of Hearts, yeah, Ace of Hearts is jamming tons. I get that, I would, I kind of wanted to do that. But I, I kind of thought the same thing. I'm kind of like, it would be really easy to jam with the Ace of Hearts, but I'm not really sure it's a great idea with my exact hand. Um, there's a lot of checking, but I mean, like, it's 25% check. It's not like shit loads of checking. Um, it's not unreasonable to check my hand class, like Ace, Deuce, Ace, Three type hands. But it's also not unreasonable to bet small. I mean, like, betting small is a viable strategy in general, and, like, betting small with my hand is not unreasonable. Uh, again, Donk Jam, like, just shoving the flop of this SPR makes sense. I think it, I had a little bit, we were a little bit deeper in, in game. Maybe we were, like, 1.3 or 1.4 to 1. 
um, SPR on the flop, but it's gonna be comparable to this, like somewhat comparable at least. So I bet, and then he calls, and like that's cool. Um, <clears throat> and then the turn's an eight. I don't really think, it, does it bring in a second flush draw? I don't really remember. Um, I don't remember, I don't think so though. Um, so, yeah, and you can just see how much jamming there is, right? Like, there's a, like, it makes sense. Like, I, so that's why I did it. I mean, like, <laughs> um, but there's a lot of jamming. Like, ace two is just jamming. Like, if you have a, and the reason is, like, if you jam, like, what do we, what's he left with, right? Like, he's got, like, yes, he's got some of these suited nines. Like, he had ace nine offsuit. Oops. Um, I didn't really, I actually didn't, even in the KO format, I didn't think he was going to show up with ace nine offsuit. Although, I don't think it's unreasonable. But I didn't expect that to happen. But it's like a bunch of suited nines. Like, it's really hard to have an eight. Um, eights might shove the flop. Eights might fold pre, whatever. So it's like, for most people, I think it's going to be hard to have an eight. And then there's, there's like a lot, of, like in my head, there's a lot of this shit. Like a lot of like jack 10, queen 10, queen jack. There's even a lot of like ace, ace 10, like ace jack, which I, which I now chop with. So like, you know, with, this is kind of like, this is not, I'm not saying that this is necessarily the perfect model, but this is kind of the model that I had in my head. And it looks like Peel Solver says like, if that's the model that you have in your head, shoving's probably um, not totally unreasonable. So, um, and we could tweak some other things and like try to play with it for a while, but like this is the end of the stream. So we'll call it here. Um, but yeah, you know, if you guys like this type of work, if you guys like, or if you guys are trying to get better, the ICM course is the highest level poker content um, that I think that we have. Um, it's what's going to give you the biggest edge in the shortest amount of time. It's the most economic thing we've got for you. So the ICM course on BBC Poker is where to start first. After you graduate from that, you know, the seminars we've got, we write, we've got CFPs. You can inquire about all of this stuff on our BBC Discord. The introduction to quantitative strategies video is what, you know, 99% of you that are trying to get better at no limit hold'em are going to want to look for. So I'd say start with, you know, starting with that's not a bad idea. But, you know, thanks again for hanging out with me, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.